Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Hi, y'all. Miss you all, too. God bless you. See you soon. Blessed Advent, and welcome to worship with St. Paul's United Methodist Church on this last Sunday before Christmas, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Today, we light the peace candle and remember that Christ was sent to be the Prince of Peace. For those of you who are joining us in video worship on Sunday mornings, we invite you to also join us for Christmas Eve video worship. We're recording right now a very special worship service. And we are blessed to have both leadership from within our congregation at St. Paul's United Methodist Church to lead worship and to lead music, as well as several very gifted guest musicians who have returned to help us lead music on Christmas Eve. We're especially excited to have Don Irwin joining us as our guest pianist on Christmas Eve, and we hope you'll be able to share in this beautiful worship service with us too. As we begin worship today, let us begin together with prayer. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. Pour out your Spirit on the Church of God and help us to shine your light brightly fulfilling your command to make disciples of all nations and working toward the coming of your kingdom of peace. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Angels We Have Heard on High. Please join me as we sing together. Amen. 
angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. Today we celebrate Christ the Prince of Peace and we light the fourth Advent candle, the Peace Candle. Our Bible verse comes from Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Light four candles, God gives peace, God gives peace. God gives peace, light four candles, God gives peace, Christ is coming soon. Please join me as we continue our singing with Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. morning. For the last few weeks, we have been sending out parts of a Create Your Own Nativity set to all the children and youth at St. Paul's UMC, and even to a few adults who were interested. 
Each week we send out a short part of the Christmas story along with a new piece of the nativity set for you to color and cut out and tape to a fridge or a door to slowly build your own nativity sets at home. You now should have received the stable in which Jesus was born, along with a short read about why the part of the stable is so important, Mary and Joseph, along with the first part of the Christmas story, and the animals, along with the second part of the Christmas story, and this week you should have received the shepherds. So please let me know if you did not get any of these pieces and I will send a replacement. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the shepherds from the Christmas story. You see, in the hills and fields outside Bethlehem, shepherds looked after their sheep long throughout the night. Well, on the day that Jesus was born, an angel appeared before a group of shepherds out in the field and the glory of God shone all around them. The shepherds were very, very scared. But the angel said, do not be afraid, for I have good news of great joy for you and all people. Today in Bethlehem, a savior has been born for you who is the Messiah. You will find the baby wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Then many more angels appeared, lighting up the sky. The shepherds heard them praising God, singing, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to everyone on earth. When the angels had gone, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see what has happened. So the shepherds went to Bethlehem in search of Mary and Joseph and the baby that they had been told about. Now at the time, Many people think that the sheep farmers or shepherds were generally seen as having low or little value by the people. But God saw the shepherds as a group who would be honest messengers. In their time, shepherds were known as people who were honest and straightforward. Their words did not mean authority, but it meant truth. The shepherds were quietly getting on with their own business when suddenly an angel appeared to them. I'm not surprised they were afraid. The angel's words to them told them of Jesus and his amazing birth and how they could recognize him in a very crowded town. This is only the second time in the whole Bible that a group of angels, rather than one angel, had appeared to people. So this proved that they had a very important message to give to them. We don't know the name of the angels or how many of them there were, but in the Bible, it says that there are millions of angels. So it would have been quite an amazing experience. So if you are a child or a youth at St. Paul's UMC, watch your mail later this week for the newest characters for your nativity set and the next part of the story. Or if you're someone who is not getting our nativity sets and would like to, no matter your age, please let me know and I will get one up out to you right away and get you on the list to get them weekly. Also, if you've been coloring or building yours at home, we would love to see your nativity set and what it's looking like so far. So please send me your photos and I would love to share them with the rest of the church. Our first scripture reading today is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter two, verses two through four, and also chapter nine, verse 2 and verses 6 through 7. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And continuing in chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our second scripture reading today is from James 3, verses 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. During the Advent season, we prepare for the coming of Christ by remembering that Christ is the Prince of Peace. The same prophet, Isaiah, who foretells the coming of the Savior, names him the Prince of Peace and provides several visions of God's peaceful kingdom to come. In one of those visions, the prophets writes, They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. This vision of peace helps us to be able to look ahead with hope to the kingdom of God and the way that it will establish a reign of peace around the world. Now, our second scripture reading today comes from the book of James, and James looks at peace from a different perspective. He doesn't provide a vision for what the coming kingdom of God will look like. Instead, he encourages us as people of faith to fulfill our duty and our obligation and responsibility to be makers of peace. He reminds us that as we become more like Christ, we will be peacemakers. We will build relationships with our community. We will love our neighbors truly, all of our neighbors, and we'll break down any walls which separate us and build peaceful relationships instead. We'll knock down walls like racism or sexism or ageism and instead replace them with strong, healthy, loving relationships with our neighbors. And in this way, our communities will become a little bit more like the coming kingdom of God. James teaches us and reminds us that we are to be makers of peace in just these ways. Now, James also reminds us about what peace is not. And he writes, where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. Christ's example shows us just the opposite of James's warning. James warns us about selfishness and envy, but Christ came to exhibit selfless love. Christ was born in human form, a humble birth in a stable to parents of modest, even poor means. Christ came down from heaven, gave up a heavenly status 
in order to be born in human form. This type of selfless love is an amazing example to us of how we can love selflessly others. This is why we sing Emmanuel at Christmas. Emmanuel means God is with us. It is one of the names of God, which reminds us that God walks alongside of us. By this amazing act of taking on human form, God exhibits radical solidarity with us, saying, I am even willing to take on human form, to walk beside you in order to show you the way, in order to show you the way of how to love without limits, how to love selflessly, how to love your neighbor as I am loving you. This is the way that God pours out God's love for us through the person of Jesus Christ. When we see that baby, a little child born in the manger, the scriptures tell us that that child grew in spirit and was filled with grace and truth. And likewise, as we walk down our Christian pathway, our spiritual journey in life, we also will grow in spirit. We will grow strong in spirit and become more like Christ, our Savior, our example, our hope. And so as Christ is born again into each of our hearts, we're shaped to become more like him. With self-reflection, we consider where we've been envious and selfish, and we change our ways to leave envy and selfishness behind us. Instead, filling our hearts with Christ's selfless love and removing every barrier that prevents us from loving our neighbors and acting, as James says, with God's gentle wisdom. As we are transformed by Christ's presence in our hearts, we shine the light of God brightly. And as the Gospel of John says, the darkness does not overcome it. I pray that we will be makers of God's peace in the world, modeling our lives after the life of Christ. And may, may we all know God's promise. A harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Amen.
please join me in a spirit of prayer. On a quiet night, O oh God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was born into the world in a humble manger. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of Jesus Christ, the greatest gift that the world has ever known. We pray, O oh God, that you would help us to become more like Christ, that as people of faith, we would be peacemakers as Christ was a peacemaker, that we would reach out with your love to all the world. We pray also that we would be filled with the compassion of Christ. And so, O oh God, we, your people, pray for a world in need. We pray, O oh God, for all who are hurting, who are injured, who are ill, or who are grieving on this day. We pray, O oh God, that your spirit would bring them comfort, that your strength would hold them up. Especially we pray for all those who are sick with COVID-19 and for all of the healthcare workers who attend them. We pray especially for those healthcare workers who are affiliated with our congregation, for Aaron, Carrie, Deanna, Greg, Heidi, Jade, Kevin, Mary, Nikki, and Reed. May your blessing be upon each and every one of them. May your strength hold them up when they grow tired. May your compassion flow through them, and may they be agents of your healing love. We thank you, O oh God, that your Son did indeed come to the world to show us the way of compassion and the way to eternal life. We pray, O oh God, for all of those who do not yet know the joyful message of Christ, that they might see this message exhibited in the way that we live our lives and that they might hear this message from our lips. And so at Christmas time this year, O oh God, may they be brought home. May your hope come to each of us as we remember that night when Christ was born. May we, O oh God, be filled with your hope for the world, for the coming of your kingdom of justice and peace. And may our hearts be filled with the love of Christ. As we seek to be makers of peace, as Christ was a maker of peace, we pray, O oh God, St. Francis first prayed to you that we might be peacemakers like Christ. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us continue in prayer, praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now, may the peace of the Christ child abide in our hearts, filling us with good will and peace to all the earth. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen.